Hi, this is Andy. I'm going to show you how to use FieldWire for common architectural and design workflows. So now that you guys have gotten a taste of what you can do with tasks, I wanted to talk about how you can be a little bit more pro proactive with tasks and coordinate this work during earlier phases and stages of design. This can be internally with uh, your team uh, with consultants that you, you partner with, and then later in the stage with GCs, um, potentially if you have design build contracts with them. Um, what we'll do here is look at a very similar workflow that we looked at when you're on site using the mobile um, platform. You'll be able to drag and drop a task into a specific location where you're coordinating work or you have any constructability issues. And then we'll dive more into those task attributes and understand how you can organize, slice and dice these tasks and track these issues to resolution. One thing to note throughout this process is I, I know that a lot of this work tends to happen um, verbally through coordination meetings, uh, through email, so lots of different channels of information. What's nice about doing it through Fieldwire is you have one source of truth to capture this information and then reference back six months down the line when you're like, hmm, why did we make that design change? I know there is a reason behind it and we had all of these thoughts um, behind it and then you can reference and see exactly why. So I'll switch back over. Um, once again, because we are more in the early stages of construction, I'm showing this on the web platform. Um, this can be uh, also done whenever you are on, on site or on the go. So many different ways to do this process, but I think, I think most commonly you would use it as you are uh, in the office coordinating work. So in this example, what I'm going to set the scene as is an architect working on the lighting package. Um, you can basically create a task to coordinate with the, the lighting consultant, the electrical engineer, and any other parties involved with this work. In this case, we'll look at an instant where, instance where you're coordinating a detail for the corridor lights in a multifamily residential building. You and the lighting consultant have already come up with the design and lighting fixtures, but you want to confirm that the MEP FS systems will fit in the ceiling cavity and not impede on that 10 foot clear height of, of space. So I'm going to navigate over to our reflective ceiling plan because this is where I'm going to coordinate that work and where it really makes a difference. Similar to what we looked at on mobile, here's that markup toolbar with the task tab. I'm able to select it and drag and drop it into that specific location. I've already pre-populated this task because I wanted to show the back and forth communication and how it's all housed in one location. So in this case, I've titled my uh, task as corridor lighting coordination. I started this as Andy and I've talked about um, basically everything that we need to achieve in this and how I need Maggie, um, our uh, electrical subcontractor, to send over the cut sheets and confirm that this fixture will in fact fit. This particular coordination item has a lot of different trades involved. And so I've gone ahead and added these hashtags. Hashtags are basically a secondary filter to your category. The reason I've put these hashtags here is because later down the line when I want to understand what different coordination items had to do with architecture or electrical or any of the ones you see here, I can sort and filter by these hashtags. Whenever I'm uh, adding hashtags to a task, I can either add them to this tag section here you'll see that these match exactly what I've put with this hashtag symbol. Or just to make it simple, you can type in hashtag and put in uh, maybe landscape or civil has to do with this, and you can uh, post it directly into the message system and it will reflect into your tags. You can see here, I've asked Mas Maggie a question and I've also attached the corridor lighting sketch that I wanted her to, her to review. Maggie has then went and reviewed this issue. She noted that the lights will fit no problem as long as the plumbing line can move two feet to the north. And she's asking the plumbing engineer, Beth, if this is possible. So you can see here how we're able to go back and forth, communicate about an issue, 
um, and coordination item, put all of the sketches and information into one spot and then reference that later in the project. Where this rolls up is I'm able to go into my task tab here and see all the different coordination items on the project, all organized by those different specification sections and those hashtags of what consultants and um, people are involved in making that decision. One other thing I wanted to note is that within the task attributes, there's always the one assignee, which is that point of contact at that time who is pushing the work forward. So we talked about at first I created that task and then I needed to assign it to Maggie to get some input and then we needed to assign it to Beth. Anytime that we assign this out and assign it to a new per person, you'll notice that we have over here what we call watchers. So I started out with this task as the assignee and then assigned it to Beth, but I'm still a watcher on this task and I can add any other watchers from the project to the task. What this does is make sure that everyone is in the loop who needs to be, but there's still that one point of contact that's pushing the, the work forward at that point in time. So now I'm able to see all the tasks that are happening and where they are. A couple of things to note about tasks is uh, the different statuses. So you can have a really high priority item that needs to be coordinated first, and then things that are just need to be kept on your radar and things that are upcoming in the future. Then we have completed and verified tasks where you're actually able to go in here, that point of contact, the assignee is able to complete the task and say, okay, we're, we're good to go here. But then everyone else who's involved can make that decision that all the loops are closed out and we can in fact verify that task. I can go into the task and move these over to the different stages, or I can drag and drop them from, from location to location. As we talked about with the uh, site observation report, we're also able to uh, slice and dice this information and generate reports based off of certain open items. So I could create a report of all the open items that have to do with a certain category, or I can create all open items that I specifically have to work on or one of my other consultants or team members has to work on. So this will just make sure everyone's accountable and you have all this information in one spot. That was a general overview of how to use FieldWire for constructability reviews. Please let me know if you have any questions or need any assistance. Thanks.